Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everyone at home no, watching no. us live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. If it's forward slash something else, well, then you should go there as well. Uh, <laughs> Usually on the podcast, I was talking with Empty earlier. Uh, he's been keeping me apprised of, for whatever reason, Linux Gamecast Weekly did not update on um, Google Podcasts. Yeah, the RSS feed had issues. <laughs> uh, no, it didn't. Oh, oh, just on Google, huh? Yeah, it was, okay. it was just a Google problem. You could go to Google and you could pull up the RSS feed and you could see the podcast entry. And it was just like, mm. yeah, whatever, not my problem. And oh, um, <laughs> it fixed itself, though. So that's the um, end of the story. We were talking about that earlier this morning. I'm like, I love it when something just magically starts working again after I've done nothing. I'm like, I can't wait to reproduce that next time when it doesn't automatically do that. <laughs> Google fixed it or did it didn't update that fixed it. <laughs> it's usually Apple and Apple. You got to worry about Apple is like yeah. the proto RSS feed for podcasts because a Bunches like your Stitchers, I mean Spotify and Anchor, they do their own thing. But like Last FM, all these other places pull off of your um, Apple feed. Yeah. So if Apple doesn't update all these other places, Google just does its own thing. It's pointed directly at um, my RSS feed, and we host our own RSS feed. You know, we don't have like RSS syndication or anything. So I, I know the origin source is just fine. But whatever, mm. it works now. We just nod our heads and uh, nice. If you've been listening to <laughs> Linux Team Guns Weekly on the Google Podcast, which surprisingly they haven't killed yet, we are now. Um, the latest episode is now available that air, I think aired today three days ago. It's like got some weird glitch on it. It's kind of entertaining. <laughs> so, Joe, you know I got a couple of uh, AMD 5600Gs laying around, right? Yeah, you do. You did something special with them, too. Um, well, the first <laughs> one I bought, I bought for Jackbox. And that's our audio system and studio. It's like this whole thing over here, and it's a pretty cool, big, big hit. Got the motherboard CPU. It does its own thing. And I was so impressed by that. I said, hey, let's build a Steam Rectangle, which I did live, and that video is up on YouTube. And just to use it as integrated uh, GPU, you know, so we didn't need a discrete GPU. We can use it for track mania, and we can use it for other wild and wacky projects, up to and including. How hard is it to get the AMD GPU Pro drivers up and running? Uh, <laughs> that's nightmare fuel, right? <laughs> nightmare fuel, Vin. In 2023. <laughs> this, is, this has been a... We were talking about this last night. Um, Track Media, come hang out with us. If you like uh, pl puzzle platforming and racing, we do it on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, Filthy.linuxteampass.com, but we were talking the after shows. And about, uh, you know, the, the AMD, like AMD loves open source and Linux and AMD, and I was like, yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of fanfic in that, people. Um, when it comes down to what does AMD really think about Linux? Well, if you want to find out, go download their pro drivers, the ones, the closed sourced ones that have the uh, special bits you absolutely need to do some of the cool stuff, like with yeah. DaVinci Resolve, some of your compute stuff, um, your OpenCL. The fancy things that AMD's like, we're not open sourcing that. Uh, all right. Here's the problem. Mm. The pro drivers have been bad on AMD since before <laughs> yeah. they were AMD. This goes back to ATI. This goes back to Radeon Technologies Group, which had yeah. open, <laughs> openly hostile to Linux. Like, they were just like, you nerds, get away. The situation's slightly better in 2023, and I've decided to, you know, take the Pepsi challenge. I've recorded it. You know what? You get to watch me install Ubuntu. Why am I installing Ubuntu? These AMD drivers are the type of drivers where uh, you can choose any operating system that you want as long as it's Ubuntu, SLES, <laughs> or RHEL. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm picking less three evils here. <laughs> <laughs> but i did manage to get everything up and running and one thing i ran into i don't know if the, how this propagated but it's like somebody originally maybe a year or two ago wrote incorrect instructions on how to get the pro drivers up and running on Linux, oh. and a bunch of other sites just copied that site 
not as, good. Yeah. As they tend to do it without ever verifying it or checking it, because why would anybody ever do that? It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. It's, uh, I just got to do the voice work on top of that. And I think another thing I'm going to be doing, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it this week, but maybe next week. Um, you know the fan-made uh, SteamOS 3.0 live CD image that um, the community's come up with? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about mm -hmm. doing a, like a little live stream of getting that installed and set up. Oh, that would be it. excellent. Since yeah. we have a rectangle. I'm, I'm, man, I'm really trying to get extra use out of rectangle. Okay? We're still <laughs> trying to justify building that. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been doing that. Also, if you're curious about how the podcast, how the sausage has made it, Linux Seamcast, wait no longer if you're a patron. And that is currently up. Two posts, getting Reaper set up, getting a session put together learning how to mix and do all the fun stuff, the nitty gritty, you know, we're not trying to turn you into an audio nerd, but we're definitely going to get you pointed in the right direction, get you armed with the tools just enough to make you dangerous. And I even give you some sample media that I'm using in the video as a demonstration. So you can play with it at home and just kind of get an idea of what's going on. So the next time uh, you find like, oh, look, I'm just going to, you know, use like this one magic button that, you know, fix everything button. And it turns out it doesn't sound that great. Maybe you want to know what it's trying to do so you can go back yes. in and modify the deal and make it sound like you need it to sound. So that's there. That'll be out for everybody. I think this Friday it'll be up for um, public consumption. So, uh, but if you want to get your snack pick at that and your early looks and you get your questions, however, I am going to keep the comments section on those videos uh, linked to their Patreon pages. They're not going to be open for comments on YouTube just because I don't need to deal with the uh, blank avatars of people going, well, then what you need to do is, um, man, I um, <laughs> made over a thousand podcasts. I don't need to be told what I need to do. I got proof. Out there. <laughs> yes. I, I, th I think I'm okay, Mr. Anonymous YouTuber. Yeah. All right. Then is king. <laughs> Jill, I, I'm, I'm trying, Jill. I saw yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fight the good fight. I'm trying to help the people. Uh, yeah. Be an avatar of change. Uh, <laughs> you have apparently caused Steve to quit eating. Oh, so yeah, me and Steve, Steve has been had a wonderful time at Disneyland Friday to celebrate Disney's 100th. Uh, but he has been sick the last few days. I didn't get sick, so we're thinking it might be food poisoning. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it's been... It's been hard on him. That that's the sickest he's been in years. So I've been helping him out a lot. And but he's eating food now, so that's the important thing. <laughs> yeah. See Steve. Steve's like, just keep your eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm also been really working hard on uh, preparing for the Southern California Linux Expo, as I do every year. Uh, but this this year is going to be a big one. Scale is going to be back at full capacity again at pre-pandemic numbers. That's what it looks like it's happening. So Have they moved exciting. back to the old convention center? Yes. We are back at the Pasadena uh, Convention Center, March 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And you can use the promo code CHIX. When uh, you register on the first page of registration to get 50% off. And that's what if I courtesy. do it on the second page? <laughs> it doesn't work there. <laughs> but that's courtesy of Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. You get 50% off your registration. So make, make sure to take advantage of that. <laughs> Good news. And what is the website for um, Scale? Um, scale, uh, <laughs> scale20x.org. Actually, let me check that right now because <laughs> I always knew it by heart, but yeah. Oh, actually, socallinuxexpo.org. Mm. <laughs> you can find it there. <laughs> Socal Linux Expo. Expo. Duh. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Good times. All right. Let's go ahead and hop into it because we want to talk about what on the surface to me, Jill Bryant, looks like an incredibly crazy yeah, idea. I know. This really is. So there is a, a new and very unique Linux operating system called BlendOS that you can actually download and try out right now. 
Uh, Rudra Saraswat, the maintainer of Ubuntu Unity and the Unity desktop environment, he stated in a tweet, I've created BlendOS, an immutable desktop operating system that seamlessly blends all your Linux distros together, thus killing distro hopping. Experience the future. <laughs> Yay, and, and I know this was a challenge for him to make. <laughs> so BlendOS is once again an, an immutable operating system, but this one is built around DistroBox and uses the GNOME desktop environment. And it is based on Arch Linux and GNOME on Wayland, but it lets you use apps from other popular distributions such as Fedora Linux or Ubuntu. And this is actually possible because you can use the native package managers from Arch Linux, which uses Pac-Man by default. You can use Fedora Linux DNF and Ubuntu apt, which are actually included as containers using uh, DistroBox and Podman. So very creative. And the live ISO image is, is actually very basic and only includes a few packages as it's you know really main, uh, it's main design, mainly designed to let you install the distribution on bare metal. So it's, it, <laughs> it was a, a pretty fun to install too. I so, mean, at least it's got XFC in there. It's got I, I3 in there. It it sure does. It sure does. You got lots of uh, choice, and eventually, uh, Rudras, Rudra Saraswat said it'll have a bunch of Unity, or, or excuse me, it'll have the Unity desktop environment as well because he's the maintainer on that. So that's coming as well. <laughs> but this is uh, it was it's really impressive, and it, and it actually comes out of the box with support for sandboxed Flatpak apps. And you can easily install those directly from the FlatHub store app, which is actually a web app that puts the FlatHub website on your desktop. Mm -hmm. And that's really sweet. And I had actually, um, I installed uh, um, Apt and uh, had, had fun downloading uh, Apt, get, get it a few of my favorite apps. One was Audacity and the other was the BB demo scene app, which I love. <laughs> I always use that as a test <laughs> on new installs. <laughs> so I'm taking a look at this and I'm going through it and I'm thinking to myself, um, it's all kind of neat. I understand, you know, hey man, I run Arch, right? Get it? Yeah. Because yeah, it's based on Arch, but you know, <laughs> you, you got to roll it back a little bit. And it's like, are you, do you run something like this for the funsies? Or does BlendOS really fill a niche? Does it fill a need? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I think absolutely. Honestly, I, I'm going to keep it installed on bare metal uh, to use it uh, for the show because we have sometimes there's apps that are, are only available on Flatpak. Some there's, some, sometimes there's apps only available on Debian, which is, you know, there's a lot of software only made for Debian. And uh, sounds like a use case for running Debian to me. Yeah, <laughs> I know there there are other other ways of doing this, you know, and, and installing apps from other distros within your favorite app, uh, favorite OS you use. But this is just, I, I think it's really brilliant. <laughs> Falling and under my you got category a rolling of release. <laughs> yes, and it is you know based the main base is Arch, so it's rolling release, so you get all the current hardware. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to give uh, like somebody <laughs> run, doing tech support a nervous breakdown, have somebody call in running Blend OS. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just be hung up on. All right. Aww. No, click. Uh, that's a cool project. I thought no. it'd be fun to give it a mention. And um, definitely. It's good for those distro hoppers, too, who want to learn, you know, who, who want to learn DNF and, and apt in one place. <laughs> I have zero patience for distro hoppers, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then when will I quit being a distro hopper? When Linux stops being your hobby and becomes your operating system. <laughs> yeah, when you need to get LGC work cares. done. <laughs> yeah. Now that's not knocking on anybody at all whatsoever. If Linux distro hopping is your hobby, I'm like, weird hobby. But mm -hmm. you know what? I support it because you're out there, you're not hurting anybody and you're learning cool stuff. 100% down with it. Mm-hmm. Blend OS, where can they get that? 
lindos.co would be the web zone if you yeah. want to go in there. So mm -hmm. new, wild, wacky, arts-based stuff like that. Now let's talk about what used to be the old hotness. Uh, it used to be the wild and wacky. It used to be the Wild West. Uh, it, it was the crazy ones. It was the, um, the renegades. Talking about Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. It's been around long enough. When you think about Ubuntu, you're like, oh, yeah, the business business destroy right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Ubuntu pros now. And you can give them money. Isn't that awesome? What? You're not excited about that, Joe? Oh, I think it's... <laughs> no, this is, this is really good because they're, you know, going into um, I mean, I'm gonna supporting get into the it. enterprise. I, I'm just wondering if you were excited about it. <laughs> well... Personally, I don't. I don't need to pay for my Ubuntu uh, distro, but um, there are times when you might need to. <laughs> what are we looking at in reality, ladies and gentlemen? Well, we're talking about the Ubuntu Pro and the Ubuntu Pro plans, and you know we've talked about this in the past, but now it is completely yeah. official. Twenty five dollars a year for your security updates, one hundred and fifty for full support. That's right. Well, it's one hundred and fifty for uh, Monday through Friday support if you want. That 24 7, you can send off a support ticket. You can send off an email anytime, any day. That's $300 a year. And that includes, you know, like I just said, phone and ticket support right there 24 7. That only breaks down like a buck 21 a day for um, yeah. full desktop support, which I think is reasonable if you have a couple of uh, Ubuntu boxes yeah. laid around that you have to, uh, that you don't want to deal with. Maybe it's the right way to do it. Um, I don't know. Full service description. I'm playing around with it right now. I'm just going through the website and taking a look at what you get. The assurance program, expanded security maintenance, kernel live patch services, advanced active directory, landscape mm -hmm. and the knowledge base, and yeah, just, just tons of stuff to play around with. I don't hate this idea. I mean, I'd much rather this be a way for a canonical to get some revenue by providing a service than like doing anything like weird or sketchy right yeah absolutely and i think also you know they are are competing with with the rail services so and i think this is a a good way to good way to do it and it's inexpensive mm -hmm. and uh, you need that you know support and uh canonical has really been branching out in the cloud and ai and infrastructure um world so this makes sense this really makes sense for personal and, use, what's it going to cost me, Joe? Oh, so anyone can use Ubuntu Pro for free up to five machines or 50 machines if you are an official Ubuntu community member. That's, that's pretty awesome. So again, if you're just at home, uh, at home for home use, you don't really need to pay. Most people don't have to pay for Ubuntu Pro, which is nice. And, like even if you got yeah. some old boxes laying around, I, and again, I'm, I'm thinking about like work and maintenance. Yeah. If I got an old LTS sitting, you know, in a virtual private VPS somewhere, you know, um, I'm like, I, I don't want to uh, blow it away because it's running that one particular version of that one particular thing and it still works, but you still want it to stay up and running and secure. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I was thinking, you know, like if I wanted to set up, a render farm, which I, I have before. I've set up multiple Ubuntu boxes and uh, now I can get support for, you know, for, for free if I only use it on five machines and inexpensive if I want to go greater than that. And we do want to make it very clear on mm -hmm. like, like you get free support. You, you, you don't get like ticket support. You don't get, um, you can't call them up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want anybody thinking just, like, oh yeah, as long as it's under five machines, so where's it with 1 800 and Ubuntu? Dot, dot. Hey, how's it? What? But bye. What? Uh. Yeah. And they have the two different options, which is nice. So they have the, for the, the main package, which is uh, 2,300 packages in the Ubuntu main repo, mm -hmm. is supported for 10 years. And um, they have the uh, Pro Main Plus Universe, which is uh, the 2,300 packages in, in the Ubuntu main repo. Included plus an additional twenty three thousand plus packages in the Ubuntu Universe repository for ten years. Mm -hmm. So you got support for ten years, which is amazing. It it really is amazing. And <laughs> you have that like extra long support. I mean that that's yeah. a that's a good value add. And, yeah. Um, I'm just happy that they're doing something like this. And 
and Ubuntu. Now that mm-hmm. we're, we've taken, <laughs> we've taken um, like the steps to get like official, you know, official per seat <laughs> support. Get that Ubuntu call center. Like, hey, what's up? This is Ubuntu. Here's a problem. Let's see if we can solve it. We've got some desktop support. Let's start making some workstations, Canonical. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let me get a Canonical uh, Ubuntu workstation that doesn't look like an Atari 2600. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, just <laughs> regular old boring Ubuntu. That'd be kind of fun. Then you'd have your tech support built in. Would yeah. you Would you buy your... um? <laughs> Your jiggly jellyfish workstation. You can put some LEDs yeah. in it. Yeah. Well, th- this is, you know, this is really nice because it's not, it, again, this is focused on desktop, not mm-hmm. necessarily enterprise. So that, that's, it's a nice go, be- go between for those users that, that need Ubuntu on their workstation for rendering an AI and for small businesses. It's great. Or big, big, big businesses. <laughs> That'll be kind of into. I want to like spend more time and play around and see what they actually cover. And I'm like, yo, I'm getting some issues with PyTorch. I'm like, (laughs) ah, hmm. Or I'm like, hey, help me, help me set up this Chat GPT thing. How's this Mm -hmm. work? Yes. (laughs) You gotta get to the red site, the website first. (laughs) You gotta Um, be able to load the website first, (laughs) then Chat GPT. You just host your own instance, Joe. Yeah. Well, there's that. That's even better. <laughs> I mean, if, if I called them up at Ubuntu, like, how do I get to the website? It's not working. They can hang up on me and laugh at me then. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was a silly question. Um, go to New Canonical. I like to see ideas like this. And, you know, support is where it's at. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. But, yeah, like, get into the uh, razor thin margin hardware business. Let's get some workstations. Yeah. Canonical. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. What do we have next? Uh, oh, hello. Yeah. So say hello to a new operating system. <laughs> yeah. So Hello System is a desktop system for creators with a focus on simplicity, elegance, and usability. And, and why it's does it look like a Mac? Yes, it does, Van. It does. Its design follows the less but better philosophy, and you know it what? is that intended. That doesn't even look like a Mac. That looks like my Linux box in like two thousand one. <laughs> it does kind of actually, but yes, Van. It is intended as a system for mere mortals, welcoming to switchers from the Mac. And honestly, it looks almost uh, exactly like older Mac OS ten, like Snow Leopard, but with the Aqua theme. <laughs> So yeah, it does look like like old Linux as well. <laughs> and uh, FreeBSD is used as the core operating system, and it has shortcut links to download lots of graphics and multimedia apps like GIMP, Blender, Inkscape, Krita, and even OBS Studio. But some of these links don't work yet because this is still uh, this uh, project is still in development. But Hello System 0.8.0 is out now and is based on the FreeBSD 13.1 release and includes lots lots of cool new features like pre-installed VirtualBox guest editions. So it works nicely with VirtualBox with cutting and pasting and and, uh, resizing your screen and resolution and um, improved Linux subsystem. Support for some applications packaged in the app image cross distro format. MIDI controllers can be connected by USB, are available to ALSA MIDI apps. And this is one of the things that I was impressed with. GPU acceleration is enabled for web engine based browsers such as Falcon, which comes pre installed. And also, you can install a Debian Linux runtime which is actually much easier now with easy access from the menu and there's lots of bugs fixed and that way you can run Debian apps, kind of like what you do with blend OS. <laughs> and uh, this, this release actually features Debian 11 bullseye runtime. This is really nice. So then I installed the latest experimental version, what the version we're talking about, which is 0.8.0. And wow, 
Uh, honestly, that was the fastest and easiest free BSD install I have ever had. <laughs> so uh, did, did you try the latest experimental version? <laughs> I I did 0 0.8.0. 0. I didn't get to 0 0.8.1. The latest so, and greatest. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone was talking about 0 0.8.0. 0, so I just I just did that one. But I want to do 0 0.8.1 too as well. But it 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 the install just took less than five minutes in a virtual machine with GNOME boxes. And it was cool because I was greeted with a really beautiful welcome screen on first boot, lot, a lot uh, like the uh, Mac OS X one. And I got actually got startled <laughs> by there was nice music playing with the welcome screen and I wasn't expecting it. And I had my speakers up pretty loud. <laughs> so, but it very, very elegant and seamless on the install and the welcome screen. And, you know, the devs have really worked hard to make this so easy to install and with all the bells and whistles that Mac OS users are used to, except that this OS installs in just a few minutes, not an hour. Thank you, Mac OS 10, <laughs> not an hour. <laughs> so, and uh, for a distro that's still in development, it is really, really polished. And I was actually so impressed by this version um, by Hello System that I installed it bare metal on one of my old uh, 2015 iMacs and it worked beautifully on my iMac so and yes and my iMac from the year 215 <laughs> yes, it was a simple yes. time <laughs> but yeah i was really impressed ben with hello systems so i'm going to upgrade it to 0 0.8.1 as well in the next couple days <laughs> So here's the thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a tell you a story, kids. Let's gather around. Um, <laughs> way back when, like in 2000, 2001, um, the Linux desktop was infested with um, OS X and Aqua. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody was doing it. There was no yeah. themes, GTK themes. There was QT themes for K. Um, <laughs> yes. And some still keep that Aqua around. I'm looking at you, Enlightenment. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like it's its own thing at this point you know yeah. uh, but here's the thing we moved on from that and we started doing our own things you know uh, kd's got its own look and feel gnome's got its own look and feel because we discovered yeah. something along the way a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. because step one the kind of people who are attracted to max are not the kind of people that want to know how to install an operating system yeah so <laughs> the they're developers not. are trying to make it as easy as possible. The Venn diagram, they're not going <laughs> to do it unless the developer is going to come to their house with this pre-installed aluminum <laughs> block and go, here you go. Does everything yeah. work completely out of the box without me having to do anything? No. Then be gone with it. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is, of course, my 2023 segment of if it looks like a thing, it needs to work like a thing segment um that can do a lot of harm this can do a lot of harm that's why i'm um, very much against anything that looks like windows when trying to make it like windows 10 windows 11 anything that looks like mac trying to do it because mm -hmm. if it looks like it people expect it to work like it and the second it doesn't they get angry the users it breaks their and what, do, what does that reflect negatively on? On this one, BSD, but most of the times on Linux. And this is something I've been seeing for 30 years. This is not yeah. new. And this, this is true. <laughs> you know, bring your hate back at me. I, I, I can take it. But I have a very logical argument here that you're like, but now for me and you, we're yeah. cool. We're different. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're looking at it. We're like, oh, we can make it look like the funny thing and it can do the funny stuff. Look at that. That's kind of neat. Yeah. But for new users, that is, this is not how you attract new users. Now, maybe people who want to relive that classic Mac style, like Jill was talking about, maybe we mm -hmm. got something. I yeah. don't know. I saw Arthur in a chat say, like, this is like the third time they've renamed this project, which yeah, I don't know. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> what was it called before? Howdy? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting. <laughs> a couple of things we need to talk about. Jill did bring up. It's based on BSD, so there's that. And it's only been tested on an Acer Revo and a Dell Optiplex 780. So if you have anything outside of that, good luck. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's BSD, so all your networking stuff um, might not be supported that well. Uh, you might end up having to get like a USB like dongle to get some networking up and running. Yeah. But they do say, hey, just make sure you refer to the uh, BSD hardware compatibility for because, I mean, it's BSD. Yeah, it's BSD, and it's easy to install BSD, <laughs> which is really nice, and it installs so quickly, even on a virtual machine, <laughs> under five <laughs> minutes. I was really impressed. Times are strange. I mean, you, it's, yeah. uh, you pretty much have to get, like, BSD is one of the last holdouts, and even though it's not 100%, you know, Linux is hard to get uh, to use as a productive desktop environment because there's just too many games and distractions on it these days. Yeah. You got to go, though, you know, even BSD, but you can still play a lot of games and stuff on BSD. That used to be our joke with um, the Linux desktop. You're like, hey, man, you're not distracted by games and all this other junk. You know, you, uh, you got to stick and stay focused. Now that's not the case anymore. Let's install Steam. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pretty neat. Uh, hello, system. Give that a look over at GitHub and go play with BSD too. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'd be interesting to to play around with OBS on it too, <laughs> and do a test uh, live stream on uh, BSD. So that that that's actually really cool. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd have to put it on something a little more powerful than my iMac. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what what's your iMac running? Well, it is a, a quad core um, Core i7. Um, I got 16 gigs of RAM on it, uh, but I do need to replace the uh, spinning rest drive, so <laughs> I need to put an SSD on it. And it would, you know, it's actually got a nice, really nice camera on it, and it works beautifully under Linux. But it it might have some issues when I'm trying to <laughs> do heavy bandwidth on it. <laughs> then don't do heavy bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do OBS. I can do like a 720 or 1080. You do a 640 <laughs> by 480. No, I wouldn't do that. Why not? <laughs> old school. <laughs> oh, oh, now you don't like old school stuff? Oh, no. Actually, that would work. <laughs> that would definitely work. Honestly, I could, probably could uh, push this because I do have Iris Graphics until Iris Graphics on it, which does work with OBS. So, do you probably get a functional? I mean,. <laughs> I can write you enough. Of, I can write you enough of a Mac script that'll get you live on Twitch. It'll take me about ten minutes, but oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there is that. Uh, one more thing we need to talk about before we do that. We want to thank everybody supporting the show over at patreoncom forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you want to like help us out, kick us a few quid. You can do that. LinuxGamecast.com. Mm -hmm. We got a support button. We got our patrons. We got merch. We got my PayPal Studio wish list. We got the bitcoins, magic internet monies. But if you do support us, you're one of those awesome, super powered mm -hmm. people who's back us on Patreon. You get a bunch of stuff in return, up to including, you like this little show, this little tiny part of the show. We yeah. got a live and uncut series, which is usually about an hour, two hours long, depending. I mean, sometimes it's longer than two hours. In your own custom RSS feed that you get just for backing us. Early access, like you can pop over there right now and be like, hey, how are these podcasts made? Mm -hmm. Those videos are up for your perusement. And of course, you get that. Old man Vin customer support right there in the comments section, you know, without having to write a check for canonical. Hey, yeah, <laughs> look at it that way. Access to our gaming live streams that we do, uh, access to our truck media server, you know, yes. come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. <laughs> we do that. And of course, on um, Thursdays, Jordan is always up to something. He's currently working his way through Borderlands 3, if you'd like to join him for that. And we have the after shows and on the Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Where we just invite everybody out. It's a horrible idea, but it's a tradition. We're like, hey, you know what? Hop in our Discord and come say, hey, come, come hang out live on air with everybody so we get to know each other. So that is cool. That is awesome. We do thank you for your continued support. What else do I have? Oh, man. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned for the um, DaVinci Resolve. Just don't even worry about DaVinci Resolve. Just stay tuned for installing AMD Pro drivers. That's going to be <laughs> yeah. entertaining. We do want to thank uh, somebody who has uh, resubbed recently on Twitch, though, Joe. Yeah, Gamatron. Thank you, Gamatron. She's one of our most active in chat, and we love her. And thank you for your 16-month resub on Twitch. Very nice. 
Can I go to the, uh, <laughs> you know, I have this dashboard. I never look at it. Uh, Katana Steel also subscribed for 27. Oh, yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> oh, that was like Saturday. We had the notifications yeah. up. Uh, uh, Skittles and Don cheered some bits last yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Just we because got some I was like, hey, yeah. look, the bits things <laughs> work. And everyone just started cheering bits and like, yay. Yes. <laughs> I'm not 100% on what him. bits are, but thank you. They're awesome. We love them. Uh, cool. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Robo Puppers. Oh, how cute. That's like a steampunk cake with a uh, metal dog oh, on the top. Oh, <laughs> steampunk. Steampunk. <laughs> steampunk. Yes. <laughs> When it's goths discovered brown. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, all kinds of gears and knobs and gold. <laughs> what I'm talking about is XGO2 World's first Raspberry Pi robotic dog with an arm. That's right. No light. Yeah. Just an arm. They, they wanted about 20 grand to get this going, and everybody took a look at it and said, here's about 95 grand. So you might be familiar with Spot, right? Boston Dynamics uh, Robo Puppies. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the uh, prototype hunter killer models. Uh -huh. So <laughs> this, th this is like maybe a quarter scale of that. And yeah. it is super neat, intelligent, agile, open source too. And it's running a little Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is, in fact, according to them, the first Raspberry Pi powered Robo Doge with an arm. That's right. Uh, it can pinch you, which is Yeah, super, super it can neat. pinch you. Right? Well, I was impressed, Ben, that this one has like a nice... LCD screen that you can put little emojis on or, you know, show uh, stats of running software or hardware. It's pretty cool. It makes it much more friendlier than the creepy Boston Dynamics dog. <laughs> oh, I, 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 have, I have faith in the open source community. We can really creep this thing out. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> no, it's, it's using Compute Module 4, so it is a little bit on Omdatium right there. It's going to support, uh, well, it does support, I guess I should say, gesture commands, dancing, tracking, self-stabilization, everything you need to find Sarah Connor, basically, man. Yeah. A um, <laughs> couple of models. You get the uh, Mini Lite and the Exco Mini. Um, Look at that. Oh, the way the way it's uh, running right now, um, moving its back up and down. It, uh, that's creepy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> relatively but inexpensive because, yeah, you're looking at this. This doesn't look cheap. This looks like something I uh, put some time yeah. on. It. And you can get these. These are priced uh, starting at 400 bucks. Uh, 400 bucks is really good. <laughs> for what that is. Yeah, um, you know, they're, they're and it has a has a has a robotic arm. I mean, you can spend more than that uh, trying to build a, a kit with a robot arm for the Raspberry Pi. So this is uh, pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, four forty nine for the base unit uh, for the super early bird, the early bird, and now all of these are estimated deliveries in April of twenty twenty three, which is code for we've already got everything we need to ship these things out. We're just doing a. Uh, Mm -hmm. kind of a what, what would you, market speculation pre-order type thing like we need to see how many more we need to order real quick yeah <laughs> like these things are made so uh you don't have to worry about that you can get two of them for like 700 bucks i want one mm -hmm. i want if you're watching send me one i'll play with it on the air i'll make it do yes. incredibly bad dumb things um within the twitches tos and youtube's tos so they won't be that terribly bad now here's mm -hmm. the thing though um we're going to need, I'm going to need at least 11 of them because I'm going to need 11 and possibly I need to get a hold of somebody who is in to like a seam, seamstress or something. Cause I'm going to need 11 small velociraptor costumes. Oh yeah. See, that would be cute in your studio. <laughs> you have your own Jurassic Park fan? No, I, I was going to hunt people outside with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just there don't think go. the human brain's ready for that, to have 11 of these come ripping out of the woods onto yeah. the sidewalk after, chasing after you. No. <laughs> Especially if I can make them scream, like the little dinosaur yeah. screams, right? Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Velocal raptor. A, Uto Raptor, we could do that. We could have like the lead one screaming like from Mars attack, you know, do not run. We are your friends. Oh, yeah. And they can have their little arms just like pinching you. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, how, many, how many do you think it would take to take down a full-size adult? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it would definitely uh, thwart uh, uh, someone coming on your property trying to do not-so-nice activity. This would scare the heck out of them. No, but not steal <laughs> it, like- Jill. <laughs> I just pick it up and carry it off. I mean, <laughs> that's why these things have to hunt in packs. <laughs> Safety in numbers. Yes. Yeah, if, yeah. If just one of these came up to me, I'm like, "Yoink! I'll take that." Um, yeah, <laughs> I do want one, and uh, yeah, there's even an Android app mm-hmm. to play around with the uh, rippers, and it's got the wiggles, posture control. Yeah, I, I, I want one for four hundred bucks. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that at that price, mm-hmm. absolutely. I I want to. Uh, Joe was saying in chat, wonder how my dog would react to one. Yeah, uh, good good point, Joe. Um, I would uh, like to see how my cat would react. He he he'd probably destroy it. <laughs> so. Probably cats are not very bright creatures. I mean, <laughs> no, they're they're bright enough to know that this is not. Yeah, you're in my territory. Go away. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of going away. We got to run, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll be back next yeah. week, 3 o'clock, if you uh, get a chance to come check us out live. Twitch.tv mm-hmm. forward slash Linux Teamcast. I'm going to get good at remembering that. One of these days, I'll be able to find our own Twitch page. All right, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Let's roll some credits. Yes. Woohoo! We have so many people to thank. We got Joe in chat. chat. We got Arthur. And we got Inertia. Oh boy, we have Don M's in there, Mac Geeks in there. Lots of people in our live chat. That's right what now. I'm saying. Got Inertia. In there. I mean, that's why you need the uh that's why you need eleven <laughs> of them to play with your pet. Yeah. <laughs> I got minus nine is in there. And all the names of all our beautiful patrons that are scrolling by that I can't read quick enough. <laughs> Tons and tons of people flying by. We do want to thank each and every one of you. Even our cheerlings. Super special. That's yeah. purple. Yes. <laughs> Episode 362. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> ben was patting his stomach. <laughs> I don't have a stomach anymore. 